Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a little mini sewed series of my Yarny Corner. It is New Year's Eve today. I'm just going to put my notepad somewhere. And I thought I would come on and I just wanted to have a little rundown of all the projects that I've made in 2023. So I'm not going to link any of the projects in the description box below. I've got quite a few things to show you and quite a few things to talk about. And it would take such a long time to be linking every single one. So everything that I talk about is already on my Ravelry page. So if you want to see the project, you want to knit it for yourself, if you head on over to my Ravelry page, they're all linked there on my projects. Do you know where I mean? Um, so yeah, everything can be found there. But I just thought it'd be really nice to come on and talk about some of the most successful projects I've made and maybe some that weren't so successful. And that will help me going forward into 2024 because it makes me look at the projects and think, yeah, I maybe won't do anything like that again or maybe I'll do more of those. We'll just see how it goes. But first, oh, and also everywhere you can find me is also linked in the description box below the video as well. Right, shall we just get on? So, um, how many projects did I actually make in 2023? I made 58 projects in 2023. I did set myself a Ravelry challenge of 40 and I was quite surprised that I did meet it because I didn't think I, I actually made that many. This year has been the first year that I have actually added every project onto Ravelry. So I've been able to see exactly what I've done. Not my own designs, they're not on my Ravelry page, because I don't know if you can do that, I don't know. But everything that I've made that's been somebody else's pattern, they are all linked. So A, I'm really proud of that, because I've always talked about keeping a knitting journal, and I never managed to keep up to it. But using Ravelry for every project has been really beneficial, because... I've been able to sit this morning and look at all the projects and think, yeah, that was successful, that one wasn't. I've got my iPad, so I, might, I may show a couple that I want to talk about on the iPad if I haven't got them here. Just one second. I've just moved that light over a little bit because it was reflect, reflecting quite a lot. Right, so I made 58 projects, 28 of those were socks. Now we all know I like to knit socks. I'm not going to talk about any socks today because socks are socks. Um, but I did make 28 pairs of socks this year, four hats, six shawls, which I was quite surprised at because I did not think I was a shawl knitter and that one really shocked me, really shocked me. One pair of leggings, 10 garments. Again, really shocked by that. I did not think I'd made that many garments this year. One bag, one cowl, two frogs and a hippo, one dishcloth, one pair of mitts and one blanket. So I'm not going to show you all of these. I am just going to show you my favourites. So my ultimate favourite project of this year was the pants, the advent pants, I called them. I don't know if you all remember the advent pants. Amy from Happy Little Yarn did... Um, an advent pants make-along and I really wanted to do it so the idea of the make-along was you had to knit a pair of leggings and I can't remember the dates when it started it started before the new year and I had no end of trouble finding the right pair of leggings eventually came across the fancy pantsy pattern or fancy smancy pants by Stephen West I'll pop a picture on the screen and fell in love with them right so I did do mine differently because I wanted them more like leggings I didn't want them baggy at the bottom but these were there and oh my word I used all scraps I, I got used up so many scraps in these pants and I still wear these all the time you can tell that they have really been worn and through the wash because I wear these all the time. They do have elastic in them. I tried doing it without the elastic, but it didn't work. Um, they kept falling down, so they do have elastic in them. But I just love these pants. They are my absolute favourite. I normally wear these when I've had a bath on a night in the winter and it's a bit chilly. I'll put these on in my nightie over the top and I am so cosy. 
It's all sock yarn. They were made from four ply weight sock yarn. And they didn't take as long as what you would think to make. These were, I was very monogamous when I was knitting these. And the real, I think they maybe took two or three weeks. And I just absolutely loved them. Definitely one I would make again. Ultimate favourite project of the year. Perfect. So that was my first favourite. Now, my second favourite is not that one. It's this one. Is another one. If you can hear that squeak and I'm on a squeaky chair. Um, my second favourite is another one that I completed really early on in the year. I think it may have been my second project of the year. And it's the Starflake. Another Stephen West pattern. And it's this one. This was my second time doing brioche but my first successful time doing brioche and I just loved this. It was really, it, it was a really intensive project only because of the brioche that I put into it but I thoroughly enjoyed making it. I wear this shawl, I have two shawls that are my go-to shawls, my other one's here as well. Um, but I do wear this a lot and I just love the brioche. So second favourite project of the year. We're going to talk about favourites and then I'll go into what maybe wasn't so successful. Oh no, can you see that? I was showing you how much I've worn these and I've just noticed it's got a pull on that. It's because I've worn them so many times. It really is. Right. And my third... I'm, at this point, they're all my favourites, so I'm not going to say third and fourth, but another favourite of mine was this one. This is, is it Slip, Slip Stravaganza, I think it's called, again by Stephen West. This was the hardest project that I had to complete in 2024. I completely stalled on it. Love the shawl, love the colours. Just everything about this screams me, but I got down to here, I think. So I'd done all of this knitting and I was down to these blue triangles. And if any of you have been around for a number, for a long time, then you will know at that point, once I got to the triangles, I was done. I was absolutely done with this shawl. And I forced myself on, I finished it early, it's supposed to have a few more rounds after the blue triangles, but I finished it early. Sorry for the cut there. Stuart decided he was going to cause a cat fight and my tripod just went flying. I can't remember what I was saying now. But yeah, this shawl, I really struggled to finish this shawl. I really did. I did finish it early. I am so pleased that I stuck with it because it is one of my favourite shawls. It is not one that I'd make again because it was just so labour intensive. Once it got down to here, the rows were so long. They took so long to complete. And I'm one of those people, I do not like to leave knitting mid-row. I will always finish a row that I'm on. But with this, I couldn't. So it really played with my OCD that I couldn't finish the rows. So that was probably a lot to do with it but I love it. I'm so pleased I've got it, but it's not one that I'd make again. And the last one, I may as well stick with Stephen West, is the Penguono. Oh my word. I made this along with my friend Catherine, who also made it. We made it together as like a little mini make along together. Very early in the year, I don't know. Maybe it was May time? And I used all scraps to make it. Is that the right way? Yeah. Um, and it's the Penguono by Stephen West. Absolutely loved it. I can pop this one on because I wear it a lot. And it's just one of my all-time favourites. I never wear it out. Never, ever wear it out. But it's nice to sling on in the house. It's all garter garter stitch well no it's not there's a lot of garter stitch in it can't get it off my arm now so it's very very squishy but oh, loved it didn't take long to make only a couple of weeks i love these welts on the back the only bugbear i have with this is i absolutely do not like this i don't know what i was thinking when i put that that color in it 
because it's all pinks and blues and yellows and lovely and then I stuck this random dark bit in it which annoys me every time I would definitely make another one of these loved it I used all fingering weight yarn held double so I, I did use up a lot of scraps my favorite section is this one at the back I love that and yeah I would definitely make another one I would like a long sleeved penguino and yeah just loved it loved every second of making that and then we get into other designers so this project here is a lento this is all made with stylecraft special dk and i made this and hated it absolutely hated it declared i would never wear it and this has been my most worn garment that i have made this year i'll pop it on quickly I'm not going to try everything on, but it's one of those slouchy, slouchy jumpers that I just veer to time. I think I've got it on back to front. I think they're the short rows. Ignore the fact that it's back to front. But I veer to this so much. It's so slouchy and comfortable because it's knit at a loose gauge. It's airy and comfortable. Just ignore the fact that I've got it on back to front. <laughs> Um, and I love it. I made two lentos this year and I made one with alpaca and uh, four ply weight yarn held double and I made this one. This one is all acrylic. My alpaca had a terrible accident in the wash and shrunk. This one survived and considering how much I hated this when I made it. I think I even labelled this as a knitting fail on one of my podcast episodes, Most Worn Garment. Just goes to show, doesn't it? So that one was a huge success. And then the rest are all garments. Oh, this is another Stephen West one. This is the Woolly Waffle Sweater by Stephen West. It's all made with women's institute so my lento was 100% acrylic and this is also 100% acrylic and this is women's institute yarn I love this I loved making it I will say when I was knitting on this because I have shoulder problems it played a lot with my shoulder because of the amount of purling in it but I, I stuck with it because I love the waffle stitch anyway it's an oversized jumper. Whenever I make any garments, they tend to be oversized, but I wear it all the time, all the time, because it's just comfortable. It looks great with a pair of jeans on it, and it's just gorgeous. So another success. And then I have this one, which for some reason has some hamster sawdust on it. It's been nowhere near the hamster cage. This is, I can't remember the name of the pattern, but it's by Caitlin Hunter. I'll try and put the name of the pattern on the screen. And this is made out of our hand-dyed yarn. Can you see the hamster sawdust? I don't know where that's come from. So this is made from hand-dyed yarn and I love it. I absolutely love it. I very rarely wear it. I'm not going to lie, I think I've maybe worn this no more than five times this year. Part of the reason being, because it's hand-dyed yarn, I don't want to wash it. Because then you've got to go through the palaver of laying it out flat. So it doesn't stretch, so I don't want to wash it. So I think that's a lot of the reason I don't wear it. It looks lovely on. I always, When I do have it on, I always feel really pretty, but I very rarely wear it. I love it, I absolutely love it, but I just don't wear it just because I think, oh, I've got to wash it. And that's the only reason. So for me, I do prefer garments to be in acrylic that are very easy to take care of and I don't have any problems washing and drying them. <laughs> My next one is, you should all remember this one. This is the Granny Pop Cardigan by MJ Off The Hook Designs. This is 100% acrylic again, and it's made in Women's Institute yarn. Yeah. And oh, love it. Wear it constantly. I love a cardigan. 
I love the fact that it's grey, so no matter what I've got on, I just, it will go with everything. It was very quick to make. I made this, I think it was about a week. And it is the comfiest thing ever. It really is. Um, I love the cuffs on it. I love the style of it. It's oversized, it's baggy, and it's just brilliant. So this is another success. I may make another one of these. If anything happened to this, I'd definitely make another one. I would also like one in black. So yeah, I could make one in black, but yeah, a total success. Right, what wasn't a success? So if I just go on to my Ravelry, I have got it up here. I made two ranunculuses this year. I made a short sleeved one and a long sleeved one. So this is the long sleeved one. And this is the short sleeved one. Don't wear either of them, never. Every time I put them on to wear them, I don't like how low the armholes are and I feel like I'm restricted, so I never wear them. So I was pleased. The reason I did the ranunculus is because everybody was knitting it and I just thought, everyone's knitting it, I'm going to have a go. And when I first finished it, I thought, it's lovely. But you know when you try your top on and you think, yeah, that's really nice. But when it comes to actually putting it on to wear it, you notice all them little flaws and the armholes were just too low for me that I felt like I couldn't move my arms. I could make it again and not make the yoke so much, but not make the yoke so low, sorry. I did make it shorter than what the pattern had called for as well, but it just, it just wasn't for me. So that one was not a success. And there was another one. I'm sure I had another one that wasn't a success. My Lento. I told you when I talked about the Lento, I'd made another Lento as well. And it had a terrible accident in the washing machine. I'd put a wash on. I'd, I was uh, washing some socks. I always wash them, wash them in the machine on a wool wash at 30 degrees. And... <laughs> dog's got something to say. Ruby. I'd put the Lento in and a couple of other like acrylic jumpers as well and accidentally put the machine on a normal wash. Everything was fine but obviously the Lento had alpaca in it. Ruby. And it came out. It, it was just so small so that was absolutely ruined. This was the Lento and I loved it absolutely loved it but it was ruined but that was it um and i think that's it for things that i've made if you can hear the cat is meowing at the window it can just wait a second it's been in and out all morning yeah i think that's it Oh, this one, the Bagu pouch. I also made this and I love it, but it's not usable. I wanted it as, um, what's this one? It's a gorgeous, gorgeous pouch. For what I wanted it as, it was not usable. I wanted it as like a little miniature project bag that I could just store things in. But obviously needles went straight through it. It's fine if you're using it for... I don't know, bits of makeup maybe, or little balls of yarn. It's fine for that, but not for what I wanted it. So that's another one that wasn't very successful. And I think that's it. I think that's it for the ones that weren't successful. I'm just double checking. The Mysterium tea, yeah. This is the Mysterium tea. I knew there was another one. Let me just let the cat in. So this is the Mysterium tea. It's a t-shirt made in four ply yarn. Now this for me is the cursed project. I've made this twice. The first time I made it, which was a year or two ago, um, 
one of my cats, it was a, it was the summertime, and I had it blocking outside on blocking mats. On blocking mats, it was a gorgeous day. The sun was beaming down. I thought, oh, I'll stick it outside. It'll dry in no time outside. And the cat sat on the blocking mats and did this to it, and just annihilated it. Absolutely annihilated it. I did manage to fix it with duplicate stitch, but it was never the same. So I made another one, which was this one. And it was a challenge to finish. It really was. Um, four ply yarn and garments and me, we don't mix. If I make a garment, minimum it has to be DK. I really struggle with four ply garments. It's not that I don't have the patience. I have the patience for a long term project, but I don't enjoy garment knitting with four ply yarn, it, I, just the way I am. So that's something that I've learned about myself this year. I learned after doing that second Mysterium tea that I probably won't do that again. If I make a garment, it will need to be four ply. I've also learned that I am in, indeed a shawl knitter. I didn't think I was. I've always claimed not to be a shawl knitter and absolutely I'm a shawl knitter. I love shawls. For garments, I do use a lot of acrylic yarn because of the, you know, because of caring for it. You know, it's easy to wash and dry, but when it comes to a shawl, I'm hand-dyed yarn all the way. And I love to put different skeins of hand-dyed yarn together and make a lovely shawl. So definitely, definitely, I've learned I'm a shawl knitter. And yeah, I think that's probably... Yeah, that's probably a lot for me to learn in a year, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'll... I'm still going to make socks next year. I said on the podcast a few days ago that I'm going to try not to make as many pairs of socks, but I just love them. I absolutely love them. I like knitting socks. I enjoy it. I get a, a lot of enjoyment from it. So I'm just going to carry on. But I'm going to try and take in, into, con, into account some of the things, like I say, about not starting a garment in fall ply yarn. I know I'm going to frog it. Um... There was something else I was going to say, my whip limit. I struggled a lot this year with whips. You know, I'm terrible for having a cast on party for one. And just, you know, when you've been eyeing up a project, but you've had projects on the go, you just think, oh, well, I'll just cast it on. I've learned never to do that again. My absolute limit for whips is three. I won't take into account any long term projects in that because they're a little bit different. Um, but for active whips, my limit is three. Anything over that, I become incredibly overwhelmed. So that's one thing that I'm going to stick religiously to in 2024. And it's funny because one of my friends, Sam, she has the same problem as I do. Which we chat a lot in the Facebook group and she's doing the same as me. Lip, whip, why do I keep saying lip women? <laughs> whip limit <laughs> is three. Because I just feel so overwhelmed. I feel guilty for not working on projects. And yes, yeah, so that's something I really am going to take into account in 2024. I've already got a growing list of projects that I want to make. I have finished a project this morning. I'm not going to show it here because it will wait till the next pod uh, podcast. But yeah, I'm going to be really strict with myself next year. So what were your successes or failures over 2023? Have you learned anything about your knitting style in 2023? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and what was your most enjoyable project? That's what I'd like to know. And maybe I'll get some more inspiration that way. So I hope that Whatever you've done, you've enjoyed your knitting during 2023 and I hope that you're all raring to go for 2024. So as it's New Year's Eve, Happy New Year everybody and I will be back for a podcast next Sunday. So slightly earlier time than what I would have done. Um, but I want to do a podcast before we do Birthday Bonanza. So I'll be back for a podcast next Sunday and just have a fabulous new year. And, do you know, most importantly of all, thank you all to the old subscribers and the new subscribers, to everybody for just being here with us for 2023 and supporting us and 
sharing our joy. We've had a lot of fun times in 2023 and roll on 24. Bye-bye, everybody.